Okay, why don't you stay here with Joe then? Andy, you pitch. Sherman, you be the first baseman. Rick, you and I will catch, and the rest of everybody is in position. Let's go. Now, Zach, the key to stealing, believe it or not, is not how fast you are, but how well you know the pitcher. A lot of people believe that you steal off the catcher or the catcher's arm, but that's not possible if you have someone like Johnny Bench behind the plate. So the first thing you have to do is get as long a lead as possible. Well, how do I know how big a lead to take? Well, like I said, you have to know the pitcher. A good test is if you can get your lead, and when the pitcher throws to first base, if you can get back easily, that means you can get farther off. If you have to dive back, you've gone as far as you can go. That makes sense. Then what? The next thing you do is you take your lead, you spread your legs a comfortable distance apart, you crouch so you can pivot and throw your body towards second base. But how do I know when to run? Again, Zach, you have to study the pitchers. You have to know his motion. And the key is, when he starts his leg forward, that means he can't throw the first base. That gives you a time to start. You start running with your head down. Do not look back, because if you look back, it breaks your momentum. Get about eight feet from the bag, and then you start to slide. Got it? I think so. OK, Andy, you're pitching from a stretch, trying to hold a runner on. Let's see your stuff. This is easier than we thought. We didn't even have to throw. <laughs> you know what happened there, don't you? Yep, I was so eager to steal that I didn't even wait to see if the pitcher was going to throw the ball home. Well, knowing what you did wrong is half the battle. Let's try it again. Here we go, Andy. Ooh, that was easy pickings. Nice throw, Rick. But what happened that time? I know, I know. That time I took too long. Well, it's a tough judgment, but remember, you watch his lead leg, and as soon as he raises it and moves toward the plate, you break for second. Okay, I think I've got it. Let me just try one more time. Okay, let's go. Don't worry, now. He stole that one on the pitcher. All right? Come on, let's go. There you go. That was perfect, Zach. You got a good lead, a quick jump, and you never look back at the catcher. That was beautiful. Thanks, Joe. You really make it seem easy. Now, can I ask you a favor? Sure. What can I do for you? We'd like to see you run the bases. Yeah! yeah. Come on. What do you say, Joe? Okay, Bunch, you inspire me. Now move back. I'm ready to go. All right. Yeah. That's All right. it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Bunch, to be a good base stealer, you must study every pitcher's throwing motion. Get a good lead, and as soon as the pitcher kicks his leg towards the plate, pivot and take off. And remember, Bunch, while you're trying to steal, it's important to keep your head straight and your eyes on the target. Joe? Oh, yeah. Didn't I tell you he could motor? Just like when he was with the Big Red Machine. He was the man who made the Big Red Machine go. I remember the time. Come on, Johnny. Enough, Big Red Machine. Yeah. What's that? Uh, Johnny, do you remember when you said the chicken was driving you crazy? Look. Chicken, you lunatic! That doesn't even come close! Get that junk out of here! <laughs> But I hope he's still driving far away from here. Maybe he's driving to Oakland to watch Joe Morgan in opening day. Why? I wouldn't mind doing that. He was great. I bet he's the best second baseman ever. Well, a lot of people might agree with you, Louie. But there's been some pretty good second basemen in baseball history. Besides Joe Morgan, the other four generally recognized as making up the top five are... One of the first great second basemen was Eddie Collins, who played a total of 25 Major League seasons before he finally retired in 1930. Another was the much-traveled Rogers Hornsby, an extremely particular man who guarded his eyesight religiously and wound up his career in 1937 
with the highest lifetime batting average in National League history. Around the same time, Charlie Geringer of the Detroit Tigers was establishing himself as the best second baseman in the American League. Geringer excelled in the field, and his performance at second base was often so effortless, he became known as the mechanical man. But perhaps no second baseman had a greater impact on baseball than Jackie Robinson. Not only for being the first black player in Major League history, but also for his daring style of play, which helped to revolutionize the game. Let me tell you something else about Joe Morgan. Joe has 262 career home runs, which is just four behind Rogers Hornsby's all-time record for home runs as a second baseman. But Johnny, he's so small. How can he hit with any power? Well, you don't have to be big to hit home runs or do anything else for that matter. Ability and desires are what counts, not size. Aha, uh -huh. it seems I've aroused the awesome, all-aware, and always amazing wizard. You certainly have, Johnny. I most definitely agree that a player's size doesn't make any difference. The only size that matters is the size of your heart. It makes no difference whether you're big, small, or in between. All that matters is that you try. And if you're good, you can accomplish big things, no matter how small you are. So my words for today are, bigger isn't better. Wizard, you always amaze us with your awareness. All right, Bunch, what did we learn from Joe Morgan today? On a ground ball towards first base with the man on first, the second baseman has to cover the base to take the throw for a double play. And if the first baseman can get back in time for the throw, the second baseman backs up the base. Good. What else? When you want to steal a base, get as big a lead as possible without getting picked off. Get in the crouch with your legs spread and watch the pitcher's lead leg. When you see it move toward home, take off and run straight for second base with your head down and your eyes on the bag. Excellent. This is a real sharp bunch. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the big red machine. Boy, I wish Joe Morgan was still here. Johnny, I'd like to talk. All day, all you've been talking about is the big red machine, the big red machine. I really don't know what it did. I mean, why'd they call you a machine? And what made you so big? Tell us about this team. Sam, it would be my great pleasure. Well, Bunch, I guess you could say my teammates and I started up the engine on our big red machine when we won the National League pennant in 1970. Although we lost the series to the Baltimore Orioles in five games that year, we began a decade of dominance that saw us win six division titles, four National League championships, and two World Series. The first was in 1975 when we beat the Boston Red Sox in a memorable seven-game series. And a year later, we swept the New York Yankees and yours truly was named the series MVP. Of course, I couldn't have done it without the help of my teammates like Pete Rose, George Foster, Tony Perez, Dave Concepcion, and our guest today, Joe Morgan. Together, we made up a team of powerful and dominant hitters that was known as the Big Red Machine as we ran over the opposition throughout the 1970s. Johnny, that team really was great. Yes, it was, Debbie. The Big Red Machine. <laughs> wow! Chicken, that's what I call a Big Red Machine. Come on, bud! Oh, that's all for this week. We'll be back to start up the Big Baseball Machine next week. Now you're talking to the ballpark!